Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Claude Sinclair. I'm a Jamaican by birth, but I went to the United States when I was only 23 years old. When I got to the United States of America, I did not even understand that I was a black man. I found out that I was black when I went to the United States of America. All the idols that I read about, the Martin Luther King, the Malcolm X, the Nelson Mandela, the Stokely Carmichael, the Joma Kenyatta, when I read about all these freedom fighters, I get to understand that all of these freedom fighters was inspired by this man. Now we as Jamaican must recognize and love our heroes because our heroes, some of them, have paid the ultimate price and that is the price of debt. We do not owe the police responsible because we know the police is doing a job that is set by the system. Not until we, collectively, as Jamaican, stand up and march and walk for what we believe in, then and only then we will get truth, rights and justice. When I understand that this man, the Right Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, who came from the humble village of St. Anne, who has inspired millions of people across the diaspora. When you go to Senegal, you talk about Marcus Garvey. When you go to the United States of America, they talk about Marcus Garvey. When you go to the United Kingdom, they speak about Marcus Garvey. All of Jamaica should be proud to salute this man, because this black man, this short, ugly black man, as we, as Jamaican, classify him. All the names that we call him is the greatest black man that I was ever born on the planet. It's not me, Cecil. So. In 1980, Marcus Garvey's bust was placed in the halls of legion in the United States of America. 1980, we're talking over 30 years, 30 something years. So for a black man that come from Jamaica to have his busk over 30 something years placed in the Hall of Legion in Washington, D.C., it is one of the highest honor you can ever get from the United States of America. Now we know our hero was maliciously and wickedly charged in 1930 something. He was charged for criminal contempt of court. He was also charged for libel. We know that these charges that have been brought against our hero was, was maliciously applied to him. In 1922, when he went to the United States of America, we know that these charges of mail fraud was maliciously applied to our hero. We have to clean up our own backyard first. If we do not clean up our own backyard first, then the United States and England will not do it for us. Jamaica, we're in a sad state. They're raping our women. Just the other day, there was five women in Montego Bay. One as young as eight years old. She was brutally sodomized and raped. Another woman that was only 14 years old was brutally sodomized and raped. Another young lady, she was only 16 years old. She was brutally sodomized and raped. Then there were two young boys. One was only seven years old and one was only 10 years old. And both of them were sodomized and dumped into the river and they died of drowning. Now Jamaica, 1962, when John F. Kennedy says, Art's not what you can do for your country, but what you can do for your country. You as Jamaican must now understand that you're powerful. Mama Portia speak about people power. Yes, yeah, she speak about people power. People power is this. All of us must stand up for what we believe in. Right. If you do not stand up for what you believe in, this is the year 2012. We don't know what's going to happen to you. We don't know what's going to happen to our children. It was in the year 2005 that another beautiful little girl, her name was Shanika Anderson. She come from Dunga Maxfield Avenue. 
She went to the coronation market and while she was at the coronation market, she was tricked on the premise of a party and box juice. An unscrupulous old man pick up this six-year-old little girl, take her from the coronation market, take her through to Manly Meadows. He sexually assaulted poor little Shanika Anderson. He raped poor little Shanika Anderson. And after that, he strangled her and left her body to die and rot behind Manly Meadows. Then it was the year 2009, where we have another little boy from Bamba River, St. Thomas. His name is Courtney Walker. He was at the Bamba River with his mother about 12 o'clock. And while he was at the Bamba River at about 12 o'clock, his mother ran out of soap powder. And she said, little Courtney, please go home, Courtney, and see if you can find some soap powder. While Courtney was walking through the bushes, close to his house, he was, con he was, he was abducted by two grown men. Little nine-year-old Courtney Walker, he was called Hard Life Sufferer. He was brutally raped. Then he was stabbed 57 times all over his body. Are we gonna stand by in Jamaica and just say nothing? Look at what is happening to a picnic there. Look at what is happening to our children there. You understand? So we must collectively work together, work together as a team. Because if you don't work together as a team, we're all, as Marcus Garvey says, we're all gonna die. And, it's, and I'm not joking, we all are going to die. So today is very important for me. Lightning! Today is very important for me to come out here and we we'll give respect to Inspector Grant for granting us the permission to stand here and demonstrate and speak about our rights and speak about the atrocities that is happening to our children. Jamaica, this is the year 2012. The time is now. You could be next. You could be next. If you look at the television, you see at the six o'clock news, we're losing our children left and right. Every evening I come five pick the missing. Every single evening I turn on the TV and I look, a little girl 12 hour old missing. 130, 111, 1716. All these children are missing. What are we picking them there? What are we picking them? Police, so we police, must, man. we must all remember our heroes. And it's not just Marcus Garber we talk about. We talk about Paul Bogle. Paul Bogle marched from Stony Gut to Marang Bay. He did not march as the records showed us. He did not march from Stony Gut to go kill some people. He marched from Stony Gut to demonstrate right in front of Parliament and to ask Parliament, what is, what, why are you doing us like this? Why are you killing us like this? And you know what the governor did? He ordered the police to open fire. The police opened fire and several of the marchers that marched with Paul Bogle were shot dead. Paul Bogle is a deacon minister. He was so irate, you know what he did? He stormed the courthouse and he made an example out of them. We're gonna have the band play and then we're gonna have another speaker. Could you play some music for us? Play some music for us.
gentlemen, we're being entertained by one of the number one band in the history of Jamaica. I remember when I was a young boy playing in the Montego Bay Boys Club marching band. I used to play the bugle just like how these young brothers play the bugle. So I understand what it is. And then after I became a member of the Boys Club marching band, I became a member of the Jamaica Defense Force. I was a soldier for one year. Didn't like the job because the money wasn't paying so good. So I became a police officer. I was trained at 1976 at Port Royal. It was a prestigious training school then. Back in the days, police officers were trained to protect and to serve. And 95% of the police force is doing a tremendous job. I can never say that all police officers are bad. But as you know, there's an answer in any situation that makes things a little public. So we just have to say, if we have a problem with the system, we must march and we must demonstrate our right to demonstrate. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, from the Jamaica Transport Authority, we have none other than Mr. Egerton Newman. Mr. Newman, come over here. I notice you're marching today, Mr. Egerton. You have to march. What is your reason of marching, Mr. Egerton? Well, it's to show to the people of Jamaica that the transport sector is a part of society. We all believe that the transport sector is the worst sector in the world. And all they should do is to harass them and beat them and put them in the behind bars because they are taxi man and bus man. But we believe in the rights, the speeches, the rituals of Marcos Messiah Garvey. And that's why we are here to support Big Stone as the chairman of the organizing committee for Marcos Messiah Garvey. We are here this morning not because we want to march, because marching is an outward demonstration. What I found out, Big Stone, is that last week Thursday, we are in St. Thomas. Right. But we are in a situation where we are marching from Stony Gut to Morang Bay. We are stopped partway, not because the police want to stop us, but because history... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want you to videotape this. This came out in today's newspaper. You know what it says? It says disrespect. Now we're not blaming the police officers that were given authority by the atrocities of some wicked people. We don't blame these young officers that work because they work on the command. But can you imagine in 1865, when Paul Bogle walked from Stony Gut to Marin Bay, he didn't need a permit to do that. Light he walked man. peacefully to Stony Gut. And once he got to Stony Gut, he was attacked and seven of the marchers were shot and killed. Now Paul Bogle is a deacon minister. What could have driven a deacon minister, a man of God, what could have driven Paul Bogle to storm a courthouse and chopped up and kill over 30 something people. What could have really made Paul Bogle do that? You know why Paul Bogle did that? He saw the wickedness that was happening to our people. All of us, I was a policeman for five years and all of us suffered. Police don't get the right money, don't get, they don't get no respect and the hierarchy who set all these things for them because they are the, they go, they're stressed out. If you look at what is happening, most of these police officers, they're working under every stress. They have to follow the orders of their superior officers. There is what you call a chain of command. 1865, October 11th, Paul Bogle March. 18th, the 11th of October 2012, we could not march. The 15th of October 2012, the serious day that we could not march. Look at this. Speak your mind, brother. I just want to make it very short. Don't stop the fight. Keep it up. We don't fight with guns and knives, sticks and stones. We want to fight with our word, our mouth. I tell you today, we took one message to St. Thomas from the transport sector. And that message was, change the word police force to police service. 
the same place is a landmark. We want the word force to be changed to service. Allow the police to provide a service. Yes. And we have a special police force. Today, today, the message from the transport sector is to promote values and attitude and moral standard starting with transport sector first. And I ask everyone to join with us. Join with Jatu. Join with the Marcus Garvey Organizing Committee. Join with the Paul Bogle and I see the great grand nephew of Paul Bogle here. But we're not speaking just like that. We have the people here. They come from all across Jamaica to be here this morning. Join with the New Life Entertainment Company. Everybody, to send a strong message. We want a change. Read the various placards. I saw one here talk about... Um, There's so many and So many of them. And so many homeless people. One. So many unused buildings and so many homeless people. Lightning! We have to speak it loud. Lightning! Speak it clear. Join us in a continuous fight against the issues affecting the Jamaican people. We're going to leave here shortly. Follow us because we're not going to march. Jump in your taxi in your bus and come to Hero Circle. We're going to talk the things down there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a brother that is working for the cause. Because, listen, you might say that we alone are going to make a difference. But if everybody team up, and everybody team up, and everybody team up, we can make a whole lot of difference. We're going to have one more music, and then we're going to present the great, great grandson of Paul Bogle. Now, when I said Paul Bogle a while ago, this brother said, wait a minute. You don't even know what it looks like, right? Yes, you don't know what Paul Bogle great grandson looks like. Ain't that a shame to me? Give us some music, and we're going to show you what Paul Bogle grandson looks like. Our children must know our heroes.
on the 16th of August this year, we brought the son of Marcus Garvey to Jamaica. And it was a blessing because a lot of Jamaicans did not know that Marcus Garvey had two sons. A lot of Jamaicans did not know that Marcus Garvey had two beautiful boys. One is a teacher and the other one is a vascular specialist. And that is Dr. Julius Garvey. And he came to Jamaica on the 16th of August. He came here because he wants you as young children to know that Marcus Garvey is not a myth. It is not something that is just in a book written. Marcus Garvey's work is real. It's real. What Marcus Garvey did single-handedly, what Marcus Garvey did single-handedly should be taught in the churches. So without further ado, I want you to put your hands together and help Big Stone welcome the great, great grandson of Paul Bogle. Constantine Bogle, step forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen in the flesh. This is the great, great grandson of our hero, Paul Bogle. And he's here today from Stone the to speak to you. Hi, right, brother. Greetings. Um, let me first say thanks to the police officers for allow, allowing us to have an audience. Let me say thanks to the Tivoli Jump Corps for their work that they have been doing a great work over the years. Let me applaud each and every one that is here this afternoon for their participation in this Marcus Garvey um, march that we want to get his name off the criminal records. Today is a very significant day because today is called Eros Day. But today is declared a national Eros Day by government. But I see wherein the government on one hand is saying that it's an Eros Day but on the other hand, they are taking it back from the eras. I say that to say this because today the Prime Minister is staging an uh, honorary function to honor the athletes on the day that is put aside for the national era. Now, athletes, a person that gets paid for whatever they do because of their ability to run. And national eras are two different things, brothers and sisters. Hi, hi. Those are two different kettles of fish. What will happen today is that the youth will be able to identify themselves today with what they can see physically. So what we are seeing today is a total disrespect to those who pay the ultimate sacrifice and was given the honor of national hero, which is in fact the highest honor that can be stored upon any human being in any country on this earth. Let me say something. This afternoon, I can really say a lot of things, but I specifically want to touch crime and I want to touch crime in a very serious way this afternoon let me tell you something Jamaica is under siege with guns Jamaica is under siege with guns and most of the youth them we stand up here right now come from some garrison area and I have to explain to you what is happening in Jamaica with guns. Because the truth must be told. We have an organization in America that is called the NRA, National Rifles Association. Now, every person are persons that is running for president of the United States. If you go back and look at every clippings, each person has to answer this question. Are you supporting the NRA? 
any person that is offering themselves for president of the United States. History will show you that. And them say no, them not support the NRA. Them immediately get thrown out of the race. Now let us look at the reason why they are thrown out of the race. America have a law, right? Where them hold the makers of guns and weapons accountable to the T. Each weapon has to be documented with serial number that every maker in America makes has to be documented. Now, what you have on this hand is a national policy in America where everybody turn 